Greetings everyone, my name is Adderville, and today I'll be giving my first impressions on two demos that were submitted to the 2021 Steam Game Festival. Enjoy! First up is Jackax, a 2D open world precision platformer in development by Keyboard Games and Mike Studios. I'll be spending at least 10 minutes on this demo, checking out what it has to offer. Here's the main heroine, Jack. Usually I start by running to the right, but for a change, I'll start by going to the left instead. Right now, Jack can only run, jump, wall jump, and stomp. She doesn't have her trademark axe yet. And as these are my first impressions, I apologize in advance for any silly mistakes or false assertions I'll make. I'm going to assume that she's a one hit point wonder. I don't see a health bar. And now she has her axe. To throw it, press X. It can be fired in six different directions. And if I press X again in midair, it allows her to dash towards it. It can even collect coins, as well as cut through the torns. I'll go back for the rune in a moment. I want to see what's to the right first. Now I should be able to collect all the runes in this temple. That looked like it should have pricked me. Her hitbox is smaller than what it looks. That should be all the runes in this temple, I hope, assuming there aren't any secret ones. I suppose these coins can be used to purchase stuff at the shop, such as items and upgrades. Wait a minute. Do you see these sparkles below this tree? I knew there'd be some treasure. Hmm, is there anything up there? Oh, that's neat. If I land on top of an enemy, it resets the axe throws. Usually, in order to retro the axe, I need to hit solid ground first.
Or land in something like that. A bonus challenge. I don't think this is how you're supposed to collect the rune, but I find it easier this way. There are runes scattered all around this place. Every time I die, I lose 10 coins. Of course, coins respawn every time I re-enter a room, so it's not like they're hard to recollect. Do you know what these pixel art graphics remind me the most of? Nitrum games. Wait, what did you have to say? I suppose that's the main objective of this demo. To restart the fairy portal. You're shivering, though. A cosmetic shop. I need to be on the lookout for any secrets. Many of these runes are out in the open, a few of them probably not so much. I knew it. There be one of these hidden doors. say that the Nitrum light graphics are very expressive and charming. I saw the glow from the edge of the screen. Let me try the upper part first before taking the elevators. I like how this game has a lot of stuff to explore.
Ruin out in the open. Something I forgot to mention earlier, once I grab onto the boomerang in midair, I can do a small double jump. Why thank you, it wasn't that difficult. Right now, I have enough runes to restart the portal, but I want to see what's up over here first. Apparently this elevator is axe-powered. open that yet. <laughs> Boss time. So it drops 6 boulders, then does the ground pound. They're angry now. That wasn't too hard. I kinda got lucky in the last strike. How many runes in total does this demo have? Maybe 20? That's a nice round figure. And that marks the end of the demo. Fairly well showing. The controls and platforming are tight. The graphics are very expressive and charming. And the world promotes exploration. What with those bonus challenges and hidden rooms. Not to mention this game supports up to 4 player co-op. So I'll be keeping an eye on this title. Good work devs. Next up is Super Mambo Quest. A 2D arcade metroidvania in development by Arub Game Studio. I'll be spending at least 20 minutes on this demo checking out what it has to offer. The Nightmare King. An evil more ancient than time itself has awakened with a millennium old hunger, a threat to all worlds and even the smallest of creatures. Tomei, the Grandmaster of the Order of the Guardians, flees in search of the prophesized hero, the one who could stop the end of all things. The ancient tomes foretold that the hero who could stop the king should be here, but where are they? Ah, look at him, he looks so adorable. Tutorial time. And as these are my first impressions, I apologize in advance for any silly mistakes or false assertions I'll make. Anything to do for every room which has enemies. Reminds me of the bounce bracelet from Sonic Adventure.
On the top left are a number of crystals, coins, and health I have, as well as the room objectives. Seeing how this is in Metroidvania, I'm going to be investigating some of the walls. It shows all the objectives I completed. It looks like the traditional Metroidvania map. Time to run for our lives. It rhymes with another famous line. You remind me of a tree from another franchise. Let me guess, Mambo's original world is going to be the final level of the game, or near the end game. So that was the training stage. Did a very good job of introducing all the basic elements. On to the actual first level of the game, Monster Trails. Three routes. I'll start by going to the top left first. I don't think I can harm them yet. I have 2 HP at most, and 3 lives. Gotta keep the combo going.
I gotta say, his tongue is very adhesive. Like the previous game, the world is very colorful and expressive. Maybe not as cheerful as Jackax, but still very upbeat. I double jump resets once I hit an enemy. That's the first part of Monster Trails done. I really need to use the wall dash more. It gives a fairly decent boost of speed. Especially when chained with a double jump. Compared with the preceding title, this is far more action-packed. That one focused more on slower-paced precision platforming, this one more on faster-paced arcade action. Not saying that either one is bad, just a notable difference.
Hang on, I wanna go to the left first. And there will be some force backtracking. I know it. Oh, I missed a coin up there. Hang on. Mambo starts out with quite a bit of mobility at base. Attempt number 4. Note to self, don't bounce on top of the enemies when near spikes. Surely I'll obtain some life upgrades in the not so distant future. Maybe not in the demo, but in the final game. Turn back to the checkpoint and travel upwards. I want to see what's over here first. This is still far easier than that gauntlet room. Too high. Even if you're not that skilled with the game, keeping the enemy combo going isn't actually that difficult. But that may change in the future. That game over aside.
Hmm, I'll ignore that room. Missing one coin isn't too important. Hopefully there's a shop where I can spend all these crystals. You're welcome, Alfredo. to access it from the other side. Next gauntlet room. An earlier difficult gauntlet room was probably an optional one. Yeah, it was definitely one. See, worst place in the world is a dead end room. I love that wombo combo sign. I have exactly 49 coins. In order to get it, I need to pretty much 100% most of the rooms here. Same with that previous gate. I must be getting close to the boss then. I'm having so much fun with this demo. I know I've died quite a few times, but all of them I feel are my fault. And that marks the end of the demo. Out of the two games, this is a clear winner. The graphics are also very colorful and cheerful, controls are very responsive, and the gameplay is very fluid. I love the combo system, how it promotes fast paced play without being too overbearing. After all, you don't need to collect all the crystals while at the same time defeating all the enemies, you can do one after the other. To summarize, this was a blast to play from start to finish. Good job devs. I'll be keeping an eye on this Metroidvania. Well then, thanks for watching, and have a nice day.